Dee, 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 dee. Well, okay, so why does memory come with more than one stick in a kit? What are these channels everyone's always talking about? Find out everything you need to know about RAM channels as fast as possible by watching this video. When shopping for computer memory, there's all kinds of specs to pay attention to, including the frequency, the timings, the voltage, and how many sticks actually come in the kit and how many channels they're rated for. You can usually tell by the little number on the memory itself or on the box showing you how many pieces are intended to be in the kit. That's normally how many channels it's intended to be operated in. Before you buy your memory, you need to check your motherboard or computer system to find out how many channels it supports. The easiest way to do this is the manual or the manufacturer website, but failing that, you can check the labels on the motherboard itself, or you can usually tell by checking for color-coded memory slots. So they are normally coded with all the same colors for how many sticks you're supposed to populate at a time with one kit. This particular board is a quad channel board, which means it has four slots that are one color and four slots that are another color. That doesn't mean that you have to run quad channel kits in it, it just means that that's what will yield the best performance. Now a memory kit is just a bunch of individual memory sticks that are validated to work with each other flawlessly in however many channel operation it's rated for. So in this case, a quad channel kit could be reduced to a triple channel kit or a dual channel kit just by taking memory sticks away because all those sticks are still validated to work with each other normally. That is to say that you could normally take a quad channel kit, install all four sticks in a dual channel motherboard and it would operate in dual channel with your full capacity, full performance and everything normally. I said normally an awful lot of times in that last shot there. There's a reason for that. This is a quad channel kit. Could I install it in a dual channel board? Sure, yes. Would it work? Probably. There are primary timings, which the manufacturer tells you. So if it doesn't detect correctly in your dual channel board, you could easily change them around, but there are actually more timings. In fact, some boards will give you access to secondary and even tertiary timings on the memory that can be optimized to work with a particular platform. If the manufacturer sells you a quad channel kit, they're expecting you to use it in an LGA 2011 board, not an 1156, 1155, or AM3 board. If you want to run in dual channel, generally speaking, buy a dual channel kit. If you want to run in quad channel, don't buy two dual channel kits, because they might work, but you're better off to buy a quad channel kit because sometimes those optimizations, even though there's nothing wrong with the memory and nothing wrong with the board, can cause stability issues and they can be difficult to override and to diagnose. Now, I'm not going to try and convince you that if you mix and match your memory, your system's going to explode and it's not going to work at all because there's a good chance it actually will. However, if you're populating your memory with unmatched sticks, there is a chance that they won't operate in dual channel or triple channel or quad channel or whatever your motherboard is rated for, which can negatively impact your performance. In fact, in this board right here, I've got a triple channel kit installed in a dual channel motherboard, which can on some boards actually reduce the entire memory bank to single channel performance. So if you need the extra RAM capacity more than you need the bandwidth, there can still be a benefit to doing this, but in most cases, it's not ideal. You're better off to take one stick out or add another matching stick. Another example would be a quad channel motherboard with a single stick installed. This example gives you one quarter of the total bandwidth that that CPU might need or that that motherboard is capable of delivering. So it's just not an optimal configuration. Ah! Hey guys. Thanks for watching this episode of As Fast As Possible on TechWiki. If you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe and also don't forget to hit that like button. It helps us out a lot. Share this video with anyone you think might benefit from it. And if you have any ideas for future episodes of Fast As Possible, click the link in the description of the video and leave us a suggestion. We will make sure to monitor it and hopefully you'll see your idea soon. See you guys again next time.